Q. Q. I got something here. I want to see if you know what this is. A Q. A Q. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Hello and welcome from deep inside Jolly Rogers studio. This is the Q Filmcast, the show where we bring to you our review of a particular film from the vastness of Netflix instant, as we say. This week we're queuing up the much talked about nerd found footage film, <laughs> Computer <laughs> Chess. Found. I like it. From 2013, I guess kind of like uh, Revenge of the Nerds meets Blair Witch. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's not bad. Yep. Yeah. So here we are once again, guys. And if you've seen it, keep listening to see if you agree or disagree. Or if not, keep listening to see if it's something you may want to queue up yourself. So that's kind of the way the game's played, right? Yeah. Yep. If you're listening online worldwide or perhaps nationwide on one of our affiliate stations, thanks for tuning in. And I am Michael, along with... I'm going to spin this thing around. I am with Max oh, no, he went with me. Gumbo Johnson, oh, no. which will later be turned into Gumbo. I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed. I just felt kind of freaky like that. I just want to spin it around 180 degrees Man. and back again. I am totally thrown for a loop. You weren't prepared, were you? I'm gobstopped. The patron saint of quality outerwear. There he is, Matthew St. Hoodie. Hi. Hi. Yep, there it is. Our Hi. snarky as always. I love that. Uh, James Hard Sub Savage. How are you, Maestro? Did this feel different? It felt kind of good, didn't it? Fresh? It's, Did it's, we freshen it up? Fresh. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, Adam, the uh, greatest producer in the history of the Q Filmcast, Adam the Bomb Rogers. All right, guys, uh, before we get into it, if you want to keep up with us, easy to do. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, you can certainly find us there. Or uh, I even recommend going to our site, the dot what, Savage? Net. Dot can, net. Dot net. Absolutely, right? We all in agreement? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is, because dot com won't get you there. It won't get you there. <laughs> Hallelujah and amen. The dot net. All sorts of fun stuff there. We love feedback. Let us know what you think. Okay, Whoa. that's it. Let's get into it, man. This is it. This week, Computer Chess has queued up. By Max, hold the guacamole, Gumby Johnson. Bears. That's Gumbo. Gumby Bears. <laughs> Actually, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be Gumbo Johnson. We have a bit of a Q poll up on our website too. So one reason to go there is to vote on Max's nickname. We have we've, we've narrowed it down to five. <laughs> right. I'm still holding out for hold the guacamole, That's but it is Max Gumbo, Gumbo Johnson. Yeah. So this is your Q up, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Computer Chess 2013, and uh, this is currently available on Netflix Instant Streaming. So if that's your thing, then let's just see if this film is your thing, right? Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. If you've watched it between uh, last week and this week. Yeah. Uh, we see if you have... agree. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> with is <good>. anyone <laughs> this that is... might know anything about it. No. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna crack the nut on this thing. We're gonna figure this out. We'll get into it here in a minute. You can tell us why you decided to cue this film up. I'll tell you right now. Go ahead. Blow my mind. Saw it. I saw the trailer a thousand times. I said, "Wow, that looks funny. That right. looks pretty interesting." Yep. Went to see it. And I walked out. I, I barely had any hair on my head. I was scratching. Myself <laughs> out by the root, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, I've got to, I've got to get some other people to watch this movie to tell me what it's about. <laughs> I'm completely baffled. I still to this, I really don't have much clue about what it's about. I'm wondering if uh, the hoodster Matt Saint Hoodie uh, can shed some light on this. We'll get into that. <laughs> if it stumped him, it's a lost cause. Yeah, I got like, is... I got like three theories. That... <laughs> <laughs> All about I'll, death. <laughs> I'll buy, I'll buy every one of them, man. No, but this should be interesting. This is like a nerd spectacular. This is our nerd fest. Right. This particular film was written and directed by, I'm going to assume he's a nerd, Andrew Bujalski, uh, starring, uh, not that it matters, nerds, uh, Patrick <laughs> Reiser. <laughs> Reister? Starring nobody. Yeah, the guy yeah. that played Michael Papa George was the only guy that he was I've the ever worst actor in seen there. anywhere. They're right. What about the uh, the guy that played, was it Patrick? No, no. Peter. 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 Yeah, that's the guy. Okay. So this film is uh, what we have in queue for you tonight, and we're going to yeah. dissect this thing. It always inspires something. Yeah. You know, why don't you explain what it inspired tonight, Max? Always inspires a top three. Top three nerds in movies, not in Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> I love right. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I put this out on Twitter, and the, t the Twitter faithful went crazy. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Not, not, <laughs> not, not. Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> why don't we do a top three nerds not in the Q film cast? <laughs> there wouldn't be any. There's <laughs> no show. <laughs> no show. <laughs> All right, let's get into this here real quick before we get into the film and talk about what it is we saw. 
or what we think we saw. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's talk about Andrew Bujalski. (laughs) Bujalski. Yeah. You know that he's a nerd from Boston who moved to Austin, Texas, known for the films Mutual Appreciation and Funny Ha Ha. Anybody seen these? I saw Funny Ha Ha. Did you really? Three quarters of the way through and turned it off because it was not funny. I don't like to wear this. I don't like the way. (laughs) (laughs) You know, computer chess doesn't have a whole lot going for it coming in, right? (laughs) No, it doesn't. (laughs) Funny Ha Ha. Actually, uh, some people like that film, but you didn't. Yeah, I I mean, I actually bought it not having seen it because I heard really good things and it was tedious it was so tedious to get through okay we'll see what this one's all about huh mm-hmm. uh his work is noted for its lack of formal pretense and its endearingly realistic take on well-educated yet socially inept young white people mm. where can i find four of those guys right now <laughs> four <laughs> four oh five Look, he's not counting himself there <laughs> yeah. no i left that no, he wasn't counting it. me i left adam out of it his un his witty unassuming films are often compared to the work of john cassavetes Held up as true okay. examples of independent cinema. I don't know. He teaches under, undergraduate production courses at Boston University. I can see that. Uh, the actors, I can't find anything about these nerdy actors. Um, <laughs> really, there's nothing there. There's nothing about them. That's uh, astonishing. Maybe they maybe they were robots. I read uh, most of them were actual programmers. Yeah. Is that what you... I, well, yeah, the director actually got real programmers because they would deliver the jargon like they actually knew what they were talking about. Wow. So oh, There's a little fun tour. fact. Hmm. We'll <laughs> Did find you out. know? We'll find out if that worked. They, I, I, I thought maybe there was uh, some kind of acting legs here on these people, but really it was none. It was just mm-hmm. oh, first time. They were, first time they were being themselves is what yeah, they were doing. they were literally <laughs> themselves. I need some nerdy white people. Where can I find some? Okay, there we got them. Um, <laughs> the MIT. MIT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, ratings. Uh, this was actually pretty critically, I wouldn't say critically acclaimed, but a lot of people liked it, and a lot of people put it on their top ten list Whoa. of last year. So mm. ratings, IMDb, 6.4. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, you have your critics at 86%. What? Yeah. Somebody got it. And your users at 60%. All right, let's talk about the uh, premise of this film. You ready? There, yeah. producer? What do you say? Yeah, let's make it snappy. Yeah, go for it. You going? You going? <laughs> go ahead. I feel like we all need to support each other through this one. Yeah. We all need to kind of hold each other up, right. lift each other up. Oh, okay. so we're all like brawls. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say rebirth. Yeah, rebirth. that's what I was thinking. Someone go get me a warm loaf of bread quickly. Oh, nope. <laughs> Here's what you have. Director Andrew Bujalski transports viewers back to year 1980 with this comedy. Comedy? Comedy, sure. Set at a provincial hotel that's simultaneously hosting a chess programmer's competition and a new age therapy convention for couples. Worlds colliding. Shot on a vintage Sony video camera, Computer Chess explores the awkward chemistry that comes into play as these two desperate groups struggle to find a common ground, perhaps laying the groundwork for artificial intelligence and its impending role in the future. Terminator. Yeah? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you saw uh, SciTech. You thought this was beginning. Skynet. What did I call it? SkyTech. Oh, sorry. SkyTech. SkyTech, yeah. Not SkyNet. SkyNet. Some nerd you are. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, so uh, let's get into a trailer here, guys. Let's listen to a piece of, uh, of um, what is this? SkyNet. Sky Computer Net. Chess. Computer Chess 2013. <laughs> Sky clap Net your 1980. Hand. Yeah. <laughs> clap your hands, everybody. <laughs> everybody, clap your hands. Would you like to play a game? I would. I'd like to play a trailer, actually. <laughs> and let's do that right here. Here's Computer Chess 2013. Two sides, different colors. One of them's got to win, one of them's got to lose. I greet you for our annual North American Computer Chess Tournament. I present you with the best and the brightest. We're just watching them get ready for the end of the world here. World War Three. Okay, so the computers play chess versus other computers. Wow. And we have something new this year. We have a lady who is competing way in the back corner. There she is. If all computers can do is calculate, then what is artificial intelligence? Computers are getting smaller, they're getting better, they're getting faster. It's a matter of time before we beat people with these things. I'd be willing to bet that you and I are the only ones here who even understand that programming has a feminine side. Uh, I would love to stay in your room if you have an extra bed. It's a couples group. I don't know if you've ever done any encounter stuff or anything like that. Look deep within me to find what is inside you. Don't you think it's strange that we're all here at the same time? Have you been with a lot of women, Peter? Can you try something else? Can you try do your own move on your own? Seems to be a little glitch here. War is death. Hell is pain. Chess is victory. You want to know the real future of computers? Tell me. Dating. What, you mean computers are going to start dating each other? 
All right, here we go. There it is. The very odd 2013 film, Computer Chess, or uh, I guess you could also call it the history of early nerd pioneering. <laughs> I came up with all kinds of little phrases. Yeah, yeah. It. It's like the history of early nerd pioneers. Uh, certain certain genre of early nerd. Yeah. Nerds had been around a long yeah, time before 1980. I, I don't think they have. <laughs> they have. Of course they have. This they was no, just like different. No. Nerds turned what a page. What did they do without computers? Nerds turned a page when the analog age came in. They, they would build transistor radios. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. And right. how. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's get into a little bit of did you know. Uh, I'm going to go over to Max uh, Gumbo Johnson. <laughs> Max, did you know that uh, this was nominated? N- <laughs> that was nerdy. It was nominated. <laughs> this was nominated for several awards, including the Independent Spirit Award, the John Cassavetes Award. I wonder what that is. It's an award named after John Cassavetes. Whatever. <laughs> it did win two awards, though. It won the Special Citation Award at the San Francisco Film Critics Circle and was nominated for the Noves Experimental Awards. Special Citation? Is that like Honorable Mention Award? That's like, here's your prize, go home, please. <laughs> your, I have no idea. your participation award. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, you're the only one that entered award. <laughs> right. Uh, you know what? Uh, hey, we know this. We've said this before. We don't use stars here. We don't use no, thumbs up. No. We will give a film the finger, but we don't use thumbs up or thumbs down. We don't do stars. We let the film tell us what we're going to judge it with, and that's what we call our currency. Max Gumbo Johnson is going to reveal... Uh, I don't even know if he knows what I it think is. I, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think I remember. What are we going to use? Max? Was it one through ten booked rooms? I liked booked rooms. I think booked rooms is good. All Makes right. sense to me. It's very yeah. definitive to this film. Or at least uh, George Papa John would think so, right? Papa yeah. George. Papa John. <laughs> Michael Papa George. Oh, Papa I'm thinking George. about pizza. M I C H A E L P A P G E O R G E. Look again. I can just sleep in between your beds. All I need is a blanket and a floor. Uh, let's get into this and what we typically do, and I think we'll do this right here as always. We're going to go to the guy who killed it. Cued up the film. Max Gumbo Johnson, how many booked rooms would you give this film? Computer chess from 2013. <laughs> I don't. I Honestly, I don't know. I, I do not know how to rate this thing. I don't understand it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. How did it make you feel inside? How did it make, you did it make feel? me feel? It made me feel confused. I don't understand you, but I like you. It made me feel confused and stupid and inadequate and, <laughs> and, and befuddled. Like your ex, right? It, it, yes, it gave me a headache. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four. A four. Four booked rooms. Four booked rooms. Okay. That's the most I can go. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's the lowest anybody's ever given their own film. I'm going to go over to uh, the patron saint of quality outerwear. He's sitting right next to you. How many booked rooms are you going to shoot over to uh, Computer 10, Chess? If he says 10, I'm going to smack you in the <laughs> mouth. Computer Chess 2013, what are you going to go I with? completely agree with everything that Max says, but I'm still completely intrigued by this movie. I feel like uh, the director's making parallels between the, the hippies and the computer programs and the rebirth and the birth of technology, and I feel like the answer is on the tip of my tongue and is driving me nuts. <laughs> I watched this three times, and I got Ooh. nothing. Oh. I got to give it a 7. Oh, there you go. Patrons say to quality out we're giving it a seven booked rooms. Savage, blow my mind, man. What you going to go with? Uh, I'm closer to Max here. It's uh, This is a <laughs> ponderous, ponderous trick right here. And I'm not a fan of these type of movies, so I'm going to go yeah. with four. You going to go with four? Yeah. Slightly below the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. And we'll get to why. I mean, It gave you something to stare at but nothing to chew on. Is that what you're saying? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean by that. Yeah, I do. I want to go last, so I'm going to go over to the uh, producer. The greatest producer in the history of the Q film cast, that's Adam the Bomb Rogers. Book Say Rooms. It. Say what it. You with? Say it. Do it. I was so bored. <laughs> no. I was so confused. Uh-oh. I was I want, so confused. I want an hour and a half back after watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you owe him an hour and a half, man. Sorry, I can't help you. But I'm going to say I was definitely... I was waiting Boy. for something to happen, so I kept watching it and was constantly intrigued <laughs> right. by it. But but I'm going with y'all two. I'm actually going to four because okay. I can't say it was bad, but I just don't get it. Yeah. Okay. It's up to me, isn't it? You're asking me to talk about a bunch of socially inept, sexually repressed, frustrated man-boy nerds who are we afraid do that of women. every day. <laughs> no, wait. He's going somewhere with this. I can feel it. <laughs> but enough about you guys. I want to talk about the film. <laughs> Nah, I tried. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know what's interesting? It seems like lately I've really enjoyed the films we've been queuing up. Like, I've had a good run of eights, you know, sevens. Yeah. I've been enjoying the films lately. I thought this would be the one to kind of drag me back down. I don't think so. Uh-oh. Not so. Not so. Whoa, didn't see that coming. Here we go. This film really caught me off guard. I'm, I'm fully prepared to champion this movie. Uh-oh. I am fully prepared. It was like being thrust, thrust down an a- analog nerd wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> to another dimension. Kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming. <laughs> Left me with a completely new sensation uh, that was all its own. That's it. I'm going to need some help, though. You guys got to tell me why I felt that way. If maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. I watched this thing. I turned right around and said, I want to see that again 
right now. That's, I actually watched this thing double down back to back. I'm going with an eight. I'm going to give this thing wow. eight. I I'm going to give this thing big one. eight booked rooms. There's something, there's a buzz and a hum about this thing. Eight booked rooms. Eight booked rooms. <laughs> does that surprise you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, it does. I was wanting to go higher because I I wanted to like this movie. I wanted to like it, but it was I just it's ponderous, man. I mean, it is very I, ponderous. I'm, I may watch yeah. it again. I may watch it because it's like like you said. There's something there. There's something there. It's just yeah. somebody's got to figure out what the hell it is. I, I was entranced by the whole thing. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> I have some uh, I have some uh, really interesting analogies. Maybe you guys can tell me if I'm talking outside of my mouth on. But it's a weird film, man. No. It's weird. <laughs> it's like sucking on one of those atomic warhead candies he has in the bowl over there. You just pucker up, but you kind of want another one. And eventually your tongue rots off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it did happen when they had some of those things. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to get back into this thing. We're going to talk right. about why we landed on these scores. Right now, um, no real need to uh, introduce a clip because we probably wouldn't understand it anyway. <laughs> it sure is fun to listen to. Actually, this is a piece from the 2013 film um, Computer Chess. Let's give it a go. Here we are. I am Pat Henderson. I am very excited. We have players from all over America, Canada, Quebec, just great. And we have something new this year. Uh, we have a lady who is competing way in the back corner. It's, I'm happy about that too. She's welcome. So the way this tournament works is this. Uh, we play Swiss system. That's five rounds. That means everybody keeps playing. If you lose, you play to the end. However, there is one big winner. And that winner gets a $7,500 prize. Uh, and the other thing you get to do, you get to play me. Stick around for the last day, because I challenge that winning chess program. Uh, this will be a grueling couple of days, so let's keep it light. Let's keep it collegial, be respectful, and of course, have fun. Let's begin round one. All right, guys, there you are. There's a piece from 2013, uh, Computer Chess. Computer chess. As queued up by Max to the Max Johnson, uh, written and directed by Andrew Bujalski. I'm, I'm going to kick a few different things around. Okay. I'm sorry, Gumbo. Well, champion. No problem. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, let's talk about why we rated this, what we did. We have some different scores going around. I'm on the high end of the totem pole on this You one. are. Didn't yeah. see that coming. Yeah, I have a hoodie nipping at my heels, though. I was going to yeah. say, let's go with the lowest score, but I think what we should do is just go straight over to Max Gumbo Johnson. You queued this up. You gave it a four. Talk to me, man. Why did you land there? The same thing I said before. I... It, there's, it's like Matt said. There's some, there's something here. It's, it's somewhere in it, but it's too hidden. I, I think he didn't give me enough to really want to really get into it and see what was going on in this thing. It was so slipshod. It was like it went from this to this to this to this, and mm -hmm. nothing ever really developed as right. far as these ideas for me. I couldn't concentrate on these guys where their computer's long enough, and then it slips over to the couple's therapy, which I was like, okay, mm. this yeah. is strange. Yeah, right. And then it slips over to the girl and yeah, the guy yeah. doing the little experiment and that little awkward thing, and then it slips over to the, but it had the proposed three-way, and then it goes to <laughs> Papa George, who can't find a room. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going from room to room and lands in room 420. Gee, yeah, what a, yeah, what a yeah, joke. Go figure. Ha, ha, ha. And cats running around there. And then the whole drug thing, and then the yep. going to the mom's yep. house. I did not understand what was going on in this. I mean, I, I understood it as a, you know, okay, they're at this place. They're doing a computer mm -hmm. chess thing. Mm -hmm. I understand the competition. I understand this. But I didn't know what any of it meant. Isn't that part of what this film's idea setting out was supposed to be? Kind of like uh, we've had films like this. I we've don't had, think so. Yeah, but we've had Upstream Color. We've had Holy Motors. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be an enigma wrapped in a riddle. No, right? I don't, I don't, it, I, it, it had me trapped in a glass cage of emotion. <laughs> I'm in a glass case of emotion. Um, I just, you know, at least with Upstream Color, there was a story there. There was something you could yep. figure out. With Holy Motors, there was something there. You had something to, to process. Yeah, and film craft. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and there was something going on that you could yeah. you could wrap your head around to some extent no. and at least come up with something. Right. This one, I've got like seven, ten ideas in my head. Well, it might be about this. It might be about... But I can't yeah. pick one. Yeah, we're gonna, know, I can't make it up. We'll get into that. I think we all need to kick around some ideas. Maybe we can come up with something and go, aha, kind of like Savage did on Holy Motors. Like, yeah. ooh, there's a premise. There's a thread. I'm going to grab onto that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You say film craft. Did you see any... F you say lack of film craft, yeah. Savage. Yeah. I saw it there, though, but uh, did you see film craft in play here? Yeah, I mean, I, I get what he was doing using the old cameras to make Opaque it... Opaque Make, and all that, to yeah. make it look like, I mean, I don't. Was it a mockumentary? Was it a found footage? Was it a, you know, was it a comedy? Because there were a couple of funny parts. Yeah, it's billed as a comedy. But it, yeah, the trailer was real funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the trailer was all hysterical. I was like, "Ooh, that looks great! I want to see that." Uh, 
I can't tell what kind of movie <laughs> this is. What right. is it supposed to be? Right. I don't know. You want to leave it there? You want to leave it there? Yeah, let somebody else talk. You want me, you want, uh, we'll, we'll get into everybody else's uh, rendition of what they saw. So. All right. Let, let, let me jump in here and get mine out of the way. That way it's low, high. You want to champion okay. it? Yeah, well, I'm going to champion You're gonna it. You're going to be just a, a chess grandmaster okay. here? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, listen, you got to understand, I work in this world, okay? So <laughs> so for me, <laughs> so for me, maybe it's special in that regard, right? Oh, I know him. <laughs> um, no, but like I said before, you know, the film left me with a completely odd sensation. You know, it was kind of like sticking your tongue on a battery. You know what I'm talking about? Like a 9-volt battery. Yeah. That's the way it felt to me. It was bitter, but it didn't turn me off. I kind of wanted to do it again. <laughs> it was like... Uh, How did you come up with that? I don't know. I just sat back, but that's the way it was to me. It was like this weird off-center experiment in lo-fi filmmaking. That is huge in its tone. I mean, its tone was huge. It's like, okay, the scope on this thing is wide. I don't know where they want to take me. Uh, but I, I love the way uh, they pulled off the look of this. You know what I mean? It was like very obvious, but it kept this freaky little pace kind of to it. It just kind of had a nice pace. I liked all the technical things that were very um, much in there to bring you back to that analog state of mind. The yeah. opaque projector, the command line that kept popping up in DOS. Yeah. I mean, you could say, well, that's just a little thing they put in there to make it, you know, wink, wink. But I thought it just worked. It kind of really did bring me into that. And I'm like, okay, this is a bizarre film. You know, let's go for the ride. I'm not sure where they found these actors, though. Yeah. Like we talked about that earlier. I thought they did a good job. I was actually impressed yeah. with a lot of the performances here for what they wanted them to do. I mean, come on, Peter. Yeah. No, he was good. Either he was... He was a nerd. He was a nerd, but the energy that I felt from the performances is like everybody was really invested into what this project was. I I, I picked up on that. I didn't have Probably the most exciting thing they've ever done in their lives. Yeah, it's probably... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be a movie. Well, you, you you say that, but this is a pretty exciting thing to happen well, yeah, in 1980. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, exactly right. Yeah, I mean, when the Mars landing happened, I was glued to the screen. Yeah, right. Right. So, right. so this it's on it's on par with that in 1980. A computer, right. you know, that can beat a man at chess. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, right. So, so same difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the energy of it and the idea and the kind of like the idea and the scope of the originality of what these guys might be going through at that time was real to me. It's like, man, this would be exciting if I was a nerd in 1980, right? <laughs> Um, so from a technical angle and all the players, I thought it was kind of strong. I really I thought it was a strong film, and he kept true to, to that idea. He wasn't apologetic about it. I liked the lo-fi analog thing. And then there's the story or lack of story or narrative or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. But that was entrancing to me because you just sort of stare at this thing the whole time like, what the heck? All right. I, at first, I thought it was going to be like a real uh, Christopher Guest kind of thing. Right. Where it's going to be a comedy. Let's just make fun of these characters. But it just got a little weirder, a little deeper. I felt like I was uh, going down that hole in Dagobah system, you know, like down this yeah. icky kind of little place, you know. And also something else I liked about it, too, was I talked about a hum in the movie. There was like this. That was the camera. It was. <laughs> but you know what, though? The sound in it and the music in it was so weird and that that it just kind of rounded it off you know it was just that bits of feedback but it doesn't just stick to the one trick pony thing it pulls you into a humorous eerie sort of storyline takes off completely down an unforeseen path uh, one that seemed at the same time intelligent to me yeah and uh it was thought provoking I, I can't say for sure what actually appealed to me 100 percent, but i know i want to turn right back around and see it again to me that's a film that works if anything just a weird funny visceral film i don't know you know i have a lot to talk about <laughs> on this film but it's like trying to explain to someone what a banana tastes like when they've never tasted a banana how do you explain that you know just tastes when, like a banana yeah. now and later <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, okay, well, let's go on to the next one. I'm going to give this an eight, and we'll see if I stay there or not. But uh, just when you think you've seen it all, along comes a lambda four foot tall, and that is Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Adam the Bomb oh. Rogers. You gave this a four. Get in there. What Why? for? Why? What for for? I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Because <laughs> I do know why I gave it a four. No, go ahead, Adam. What do you got for this, man? No, that's it. I really do not know what to say about this movie. You, well, what was it that turned you off from, let's say, an eight or kept you from going one? I mean, anything you liked? Anything that you really didn't like? Explosions? Boobies? Yeah. No, there were boobies. Yeah. I guess so. You're right. I totally. There was. <laughs> yes. I was so wrapped up in everything else, I missed it. I have way too many questions to figure out what in the world I'll. And, and like how is that a wanted. bad thing? How is that a bad thing? No. It's good to have I'll, questions. I want to know what the cats. What's to do with the cats? I, can't, I have no answer for the that, cats. Well, no, but, that, but but basically the same reason you gave it a four is why I gave it a seven because I'm so intrigued. I'm asking the same questions, being like, I have to know 
what's the up with the cats? What's up with uh, <laughs> the growing leg? Did you yeah. see the guy sitting in the stool while his legs were growing out in front of him? Oh Maybe yes, yes, I did. I thought it was. I thought it was something weird with the camera. But yeah. now that you said that, no, oh, there's a few things I watched twice with a microscope. I'm like, I'm gonna see if these guys notice this. I missed that. Yeah, I missed yeah. it too. Well, you mentioned something earlier about it. The uh, like the ultrasound, the yeah. ultrasound oh. screen. Yeah, yeah, you said you went okay. back and well, saw something. All right, and so, I saw something completely different. So yeah. one of the big turns in this movie is the. Uh, there's an intern, I guess, an assistant that says he uses this for psychological purposes because yeah. that's his field. Yeah. And he's looking at the computer typing in pretty, I mean, big time, though cliche questions yeah. like, uh, who are you? What the is a soul? Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's typing this in. The computer's answering him as best it can. A lot of question marks. And then it all of a sudden pops up an uh, ultrasound. And the first time I watched it, I was like, well, that was weird. What does that mean? Second right. time I watched it, I paused it on the ultrasound. And I mean, obviously, an ultrasound is going to show a baby. But I, you look like you did this too, actually, oh. just by looking at me. So I paused oh, it on yeah. the ultrasound, and it wasn't a baby. It looked, it was either a cat or a demon. I don't yeah. know. It yeah. wasn't a baby. <laughs> it wasn't a baby. I stopped this film. This cat is, demon. This oh, is an wait. hour and a half long film. It took me three hours to watch because I paused it so many times. I yeah. know why the cats were around. They were just trying to look for a mouse on for a computer. Oh, oh my God! Oh, there weren't any. Wow. Wait a second. Did he say that wow. they they had just heard that there were there were there were some mice in this hotel? Right? <laughs> I think it's. Mounds, mouses. Mouses. Mouse. Mice. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I think he might be trying to say something on that, though. Is that some kind but, of a storyline okay. of here's where the future's taking us? Technology is going to take over our lives. And turn so, us all into cat? Uh, maybe. <laughs> and then, and then it, it seemed like Papa well, George was allergic to cats. Right. So what does that mean now? <laughs> yeah, he sneezed. He, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, we're talking about the 2013 film Computer Chess, by the way. Let's get into some more of these things. I think oh, we I might think have some things to talk about. I do want to say one thing I really enjoyed about this movie. There was a scene where the uh, nerd girl shows up at the door of the the chess the dream. Nerd. Yeah, yeah. No, and oh, yeah, she's bad. talking about the everyone moving in chess pieces. My bad. Yeah. The chess dream. I thought that was really great. I love that scene. Neat. Yeah, it was neat. And I thought that was the best part of the whole movie. Well, the film Other obviously. Than that, the rest of it, I can't get. It. Okay, so with that scene, if you get into anything super hardcore, because I've gotten into like photography hardcore, and when you get into something and you study it to the point of exhaustion, you you start it, it changes really how you see the world. So yeah. you start seeing the world as it's framed by your camera. If you're painting something, you see the world uh, as the colors that are on your palette. Mm -hmm. So the right. I mean that that she had a dream that every. Everybody's moving in, in, you know, as chess pieces. It's not that surprising. I love chess, mm -hmm. by the way. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, nobody knows that. <laughs> but I, never, I, never I love, you in chess. love chess. So this movie was kind of fun in that regard. Yeah. You, you absolutely pick up on the, all these little nuances of your life if you're just that invested in it. Yeah, and I like that, too, the nice planet where she uh, she basically said that to him. Yeah. You know, I've seen this. the world's moving like a chess board. And after that, he very seriously says, uh, you know, when she was like, I was expecting a knight to teleport. He's like, did you see two people? Uh, come together and only mm -hmm. one leave, right, which right. harks back to what the hippies, I, right. I call them the hippies, were saying, yeah. where they were chanting, one want to be two, two, two want, want to be one, one. which See? was echoed through the whole movie. Yeah, there's yeah. so much weird stuff in this film. I, this is not a one-off film, maybe not a two-off film. The more you watch it, it might come together. Savage, man, you gave this a four as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm Beat not, it up, man. Yeah. What's up? Well, I'm not a fan of these kind of movies. It's uh, the, the faux documentary. If you're going to commit to that, do it. Don't establish that this is being filmed or is a found footage and then immediately, two shots later, show that it's not that. Mm -hmm. That Then it becomes gimmicky. So there's obviously not a second cameraman. There's obviously not a cameraman in the rooms alone with these people. So it, it fails. I mean, the gimmick fails immediately with that, okay? You know, I, I can look... Unless it was never a gimmick at all. No, but it, it, was, it was established to be that. It was, you know, we're and, recording and the... it on this camera and this footage. I don't think it was established like that. I think, I think that was the yeah. first shot. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I don't yeah. think that it established itself that because you said in the next shot, Shot, it showed that it wasn't that, that. It wasn't that. But they, they made it a point to point out the cameraman throughout the film. Like, this is he's in the room and he's shooting. Yeah, I know the, where the you're thing. going. So, you know, that's just one of my biases, things like that. It's like I, It failed in that regard. It, it drew me out of the film. If this is a found discovery, it's found in that it seemed like they were discovering the script day by day. It's like they were just meandering through. It almost felt like these people were just talking to each other. It's like, okay, talk about programming. 
go. Well, again, a lot of these were not and, actors. No, they and, were programmers. Well, so I, would, it, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the we was like, you know what, just talk some jargon, yeah. just have a well, little it, bit it of Well, it shows an absence of script, and an absence of story. I and, think that was the plan. Let's well, get everybody together, no, but I, and let's I, riff this thing out. Let's just see where the day takes us. We have one thread, one idea we're going to go with. And I'm cool with that, And let's man. build every day around that. I mean, Christopher Guest does that brilliantly. Right, right, I mean, exactly. It, so it, it can be done well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blair Witch Project did that. Well, it's a little different. Um, it worked. Well, <laughs> Well, it's a little different. I mean, they, they established that they had all these batteries and cameras and whatever. I think with, I'm with Max in this, and, and I think what Max is saying is like, you feel like there's supposed to be subtext here. Yeah. But where is it? Where did, where is that subtext? Where's the through line for that subtext? Because when they started going to the, uh, the couples retreat, I felt like I knew they were going. The, the opposites, the, the white and black, the, the yin and the yang, the, the man and the woman. Uh, yeah, I thought yeah. that's where they're going to bring it together. Mm -hmm, right. That's right. where it, it's all going to come come together but then it just meanders about it, it just, i don't know about it, that it, it doesn't though. it doesn't meander about you know i want to talk it, about a lot it of the does weirdness. because it does it no, does well I mean, it, sorry to jump in but it, you can look at the very last scene which is the most chaotic obviously scene yeah, the of the whole movie is, take what happened in the last scene and you see what, exactly what you're talking about which is a marriage of humanity and technology which is where this movie projects yeah. us to yeah. be headed. I mean, obvious. That's extremely obvious. You have an embryo inside a computer. I don't know how much more obvious the theme that he was trying to right. get across right. was. No. And if there is anything scripted, if there is a yeah. story to it, the, the, those scenes with the MIT team, uh, yeah. that guy in particular is like, I'd like to resign. Well, you haven't even made your first move. I mean, I thought that was kind of funny. See, I thought that whole thing um, was great, too. That that play between these guys uh, with their computers playing chess, I thought all that was really interesting to me and really yeah, fun no, to watch. Yeah, but these guys weren't playing chess. I mean, well, and he even said that, that none of them cared about chess. I, I care mean, about chess. No, I mean, and he even <laughs> said that and when the, the, the two, the, the, the swingers were asking him, he's like, so you want to be a chess? He goes, I, I don't want to play chess. Right, I, I right. want to write a program. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a programmer. Hey, we're, we're going to get into some scenes in a minute. Let's take a break. Uh, here's a piece from 2013, uh, Computer Chess. That's what we're talking about. I'm sure you're going to hear a nerd in here somewhere. We have no idea. <laughs> We've been we'll listening to them all. Yeah, exactly. Right. Anyone in the movie. Right. All right, here's 2013, Computer Chess. Here you go. Computer chest. Computer chest? What did I say? <laughs> Computer like chest. Chest. <laughs> no, that's the I last scene. I think you're about scene. the last scene, yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi. Um, hi. Peter, your, your strange ideas from last night, they really got to me. Um, this morning I woke up and everything was weird. I, I walked out into the lobby of the conference and I looked down and everybody looked like they were chess pieces. I saw Professor Schasser was standing there and he was the king. And Henderson was zigzagging, going diagonals like a bishop. And there was a student who was stepping forward just like a pawn. And just as he was about to hit Professor Schasser, his wife swooped in to defend him just like a queen. And I kept thinking that, uh, that a knight was going to teleport. Did you see any teleportation? No. Um, did you see anything where, like, if two bodies would come together, one of them would disappear? No. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Um, good night. Good, good night. All right, there it is. A uh, piece from 2013, Computer Chess, queued up by Max Gumbo Johnson. Gumby oh. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to bait you in with it. You took the bait. I do that. Right I do that all the time. Gumby bear. You're just like a girl at a forget bar. the year thing. You're going straight for the Gumby Bear. <laughs> yeah, I'm forget not. Gumbo. He's Gumby Bear. I'm not calling. I refuse to call you that. Uh, you will eventually. It's okay. I probably will before the, <laughs> before the show's over. But when we left last time, Savage was ripping into this film about yeah. all kinds of good stuff. We'll get back to you man good i want to go over because you have plenty to say yeah move 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 back to me like you know the quicker i move piece. the quicker i get to you right kind of right. like a chess piece diagonal knock all right, this all right. thing around all right go ahead. he's I'm obviously gonna... the queen of the group right <laughs> oh, but oh. Oh. it kind of seems that way doesn't it uh moving my pawn up to uh max just talk to me about this film talk to me about a, a scene that you might want to dis discuss a scene a scene yeah. talk to me okay, about here, here's this the, here's, film here's the one scene well, it's one of the one of the <laughs> several scenes, but the one scene that gave me probably my best idea of what this movie might be about yeah. was when Michael M I C H A E L Papa George <laughs> P A P 
P A P A G E O R G. Check again. Uh, went to uh, <laughs> went to his mother's house to look for that box. Yeah. What in the hell? I loved it. And though. all of a sudden, kind of goes to color. Yeah, goes to sepitone kind of thing. Lost me right the there. The sound Lost me right is completely there. out of sync. And he even says, "Stuck in a loop. I'm stuck in a loop. Stuck in a loop. Stuck Walking in a loop. around, yeah. looking in that same spot over and over and over for that box. Didn't they? Uh, he had some pills. So no, he may have took sold some. Pills. He was looking for some yeah, money. Yeah, so they may have taken the money. pills, and that may have been no, like, no, no. So, no it was not a hallucinatory a dream. He, yeah. he yeah. took the pills. He was trying to find money that no, he knew wasn't there. And it if was have, a stylized thing. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Yeah. yeah, so he's wandering around this mother's house, literally stuck in a loop, and he had his his uh, friend with him, his he, Native American. He had the friend. guy that he owed the money. He had the guy to, right? he owed the money to, and it just went into like once again, like you were in a wormhole that went off into another nerd wormhole, and instantly you're in another weird place, coming from an even more bizarre weird. And that's that. The reason I say that scene really stuck out for me to me from and this is just my theory my idea sort of encompassed what i think the theme of the movie was was this the, the whole thing the idea behind the computer chess yeah like the guy says no i don't really want to be a chess master i re- i think at one point he said i don't even know how to play chess yep no um I, yeah, I think he did. He said all he, he knows is the move. Who are you talking about, Peter? Yeah, I think Peter. All right, so Peter, when he asked the MIT chick to move, she made a simple move. He's like, think about it a little bit more. Yeah. Obviously, he okay, knew how well, to play. Okay, boom, well, yeah. but, but No, but when he was with the <laughs> swingers drop. couple, when he was with the swingers couple, yeah. and he said, do you, so you want to do this? Said, no. no, I just want to write a program. No, uh, but anyway, geez. the point is, I, I think one of the one of the themes of the movie, one of the central themes of the movie, is that you know this this whole thing they're they're trying to make a computer that can beat a human at chess and everybody's sort of going around in a circle they're stuck in this loop going right. back mm-hmm. and forth and mm-hmm. back and forth and back and forth over the same territory the same ground i think some of them start to question what is the point of this well yeah uh, let Go me ahead. interject real quick because interject i, I, I kind of picked up on that and, I, and I, the point you're making i picked up on but i picked up on when he was doing the experiment with the girl the mit girl in the room that the computers were facing themselves because these were just computers playing themselves they weren't playing humans in a loop in a loop mm-hmm. and then once the one started playing the human then it, it changed it started it started changing and I, I think if Emotion. the theme of the AI if there is an AI theme in this movie it picked up there and I think right. that's where the swingers came in is like to bring that humanist element into the the analog so not just the the human aspect of that they they brought a primitive side of the, the human primal as, okay. humanism primal. thank you yeah. all right yeah very primal uh, we're talking so primal that it's a rebirth of like yeah. yourself yeah yeah they actually did rebirth exercises yeah today. I mean yeah. listen and Papa George this yeah. film had all kinds of ideas and, and I and, and things that wanted to get across to you. It was about rebirth. It was about the dangers of technology and where it may take us. It was about the dangers of technology in our relationships. Remember the one guy says, I think the biggest thing with computers is going to be about dating. And he was It's going to be all about dating. And that's the camera guy. Computers are going to decide porn and it's going to decide who we date and who we love. And So the film had a message and sometimes it was subtle but a lot of times it was extremely obvious but there's no doubt that's what this guy Bujowski had something in mind there. The whole movie is is juxtaposing I say that word way too much. I like that. It's a, it's a te- quality te- word. Technology and humanity. Right. And right. in the last scene, it puts them together to show you that that's exactly what it's talking about. And I think another part uh, that very clearly illustrates what what the theme is of the movie is is Peter, yeah. who's very human. Yeah. But he works like a machine. The yeah. boy doesn't drink coffee. Right. He doesn't sleep. He's been up for two nights doing this. He is a machine. Would you yeah. say he's the protagonist in this film? Absolutely, yeah. He, yeah. He's the guy yeah. that I want to figure out what's happening to. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy that, that actually says this this machine is thinking for itself. This yeah. is this is yeah. a, an intelligent being. Yeah, that, that scene right there. Explain to me exactly what happened with him. We'll go back. I think you talked about this. He drags his computer into the MIT girl's bedroom. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, hotel room, right? Takes it to her room. And he wa- was he trying to see if this machine was becoming real? Because in his mind, he was thinking this thing's coming alive. No, he was I don't just, think no. He was I don't to... think uh, before the experiment. I think he was just saying, "I need to try something different." This yeah, thing's okay. been playing computers the whole time. Let's do something different, mm-hmm. and that's where the the change kind of comes in. And that's again going with the theme that the humanity is eventually going to just blur into the, the technology that it's created. Hey, we talk about this Papa John guy, Papa, <laughs> Papa George. George, Papa George, Papa P A P A G E O R G. I'm hungry. I want some pizza, Papa John. <laughs> Papa right. George. Um, he was the protagonist, but he was also a main character in this film. He was 
have thought he might end up being a, a robot at the end. That's exactly what I was thinking. I but thought he was you a know program. What? He wasn't. <laughs> I thought I had that in my mind until he sneezed at the cat, and I'm like, a robot wouldn't well, do that. Well, all right. So define. What was this cat. guy's story? Tell someone explain define this guy to me. Cat. Define cat because that was what was in the ultrasound. So define cat. See, the whole thing's weird, and that's what I this loved so like, much about it. I loved it because of that thing too. I didn't want to figure it out. You know, in the end, I don't want to figure this thing out. I just like the sensation of it. You're insane. I want to completely figure it out. <laughs> no, because it's on the then tip watch of your Pride tongue. and Prejudice or something. It's on no. the tip of your tongue. You know it's right there. I yeah. can reach out. I can touch it, but I just can't you find it. I'm if, a blind man. If you had to think back on a couple of scenes in this film or maybe one you want to get into right now, what would it be? Uh, definitely the ending scene. I'd like of course. I talked about that at one point. Well, listen, we're going to talk about the ending. You brought that up. Thanks. Thank you for that because there is some to, something to chew on there. Which part of the ending? Mm-hmm. There's like four different endings. When you say ending, ending of what? This yeah, exactly. one, that one, or the other? It's you like wanna... all these little threads were ended individually. You know, I really liked Peter's character in there. Though. I thought there was like a bit of a hero element here. He's wandering around here. He's the only one that seems to get it. He kind of gets something that he's he's getting ready. We as a humanity are getting ready to go into an abyss of some sort. And he has fear there. You kind of sense that he's afraid of something he can't put his finger on. Yeah, and civilization. I think... Well, I don't know about civilization. Yeah. That's a good thread because yeah. then you have, say, like the wizard characters to go back to Robert McKee and yeah. and Joseph Campbell, who are who you would say would be the hippie guy, yeah, yeah. right? The, the that big is, dude the that is Indian. very that is the primitive man that's saying you don't get it, you don't get all that there is. Right. So you have this guy, you know, saying you're a smart guy, you get what's going on, but you don't really understand what's about to happen in the next 30 years. You don't right, You don't right, understand. Right. Even though they don't themselves understand, that's yep. still... God, I no, exa- I know exactly <laughs> where you're going. That's why I liked his character. I thought he was a bit of a Paul Revere in a way. He's there, and he, a part of him wanted to just say, wait a minute, hold on, we're going someplace that is not safe. He had a fear about him and kind of a, an intuition about him about where all this technology he has in front of him may lead us, and he felt like it wasn't a good place. I mean, there was something to be said there. No, nah, at disagree. least that's what I thought. No, because I thought he was just observational, like a scientist. I mean, he's pure, what did you, purely wait, observational. Can I bring up one? Are we still real, talking about Peter? Yeah. yeah, we're talking about Peter, man. Okay. Hey, can I bring up one scene? Let's talk about this, and I'll shut up about scenes. What do you think about the threesome scene? I, <laughs> Max, go. <laughs> <laughs> Start with the robe. Here's the only. Here's here's the only thing I could think about the threesome scene. I thought it was put in there to sort of display. These guys being so involved in this computerized artificial world that they had no idea how to deal with actual right. people. And when somebody threw the biggest curveball at them, they completely flipped out and didn't even know how to react to oh, it. Come didn't on. Know, I, that's, yeah, that's what I, that's the way I read that. If you sat, if you were in a room with two people you didn't know who are 20 years older than you and they said, we're old enough to be your parents. Yeah. Use that. <laughs> Use that. I'd be like, <laughs> I would be like, you are the creepiest people I've ever met Which in my life. Which is exactly what he did. No, yeah. he didn't. Yeah. He, if that was me, I'd have got up and walked. I said, you people what did he do? Nuts. He I'm walked out of the room. No, he walked and sat down next to him. He and went then in he there walked and, out of the room. Yeah, He's, after about letting him talk to him for 10 minutes. Again, they're parental the figures. They say, sit down. He had, he, he, yeah. He, he so, says, okay, so, so, and then he, yeah. he takes his own way and says, right, this is kind of messed up. Okay, yeah. so then I'm you out. tell me what it was about. That scene? Yeah. <laughs> what was it like when you were in that situation? You got to come up with something. <laughs> All I know is when it happened to me, I totally did it, and I've regretted it ever since. <laughs> well, look, you know, I think I think if the uh, if if the female in that situation didn't look like she could have her toes curled under gathering sticks and berries out in your front yard, she looked like a ground sloth. <laughs> Uh, that didn't, I, I didn't. <laughs> no, I, I did not see that scene coming. Yeah, I didn't at see that all. scene coming either. I saw it coming. Did you really? Yeah, really? yeah. I kind of thought of something about that. So you, you stuck the around then, right? So oh, yeah. you know, That's uh, the only thing that kept me intrigued. You know, I'm looking at that too. You have this hotel where you have these computer nerds doing their thing, and you have these real hippie people doing their thing. They're very earthy and grounded and removed from technology. The other ones, you know, are full force into it. Did you like the uh, the hippie element of this? Did you? What, what were these? Uh, loved there was it. some condescension though on both ways. It was like they they kind of looked down on him. It's like oh, yeah. you you just need to be free. You, you need to experience what we all got. hippies are like that all yeah, the time. But you know <laughs> the flip side. You know the the nerds can be that the same condescending ways. Like oh, you just don't understand what's going on on this way. But I really felt it like that, and it almost seemed like yeah. kind of abuse. It's like, oh, here's mm-hmm. an easy pick for this guy. But what were you they know? trying to say, Savage, when the one nerd wandered into the convention hall area where the hippies were, and they kind of suck him into their little clan, You're and they make Papa George, Papa George, and they make him oh, go Papa through George. the birth. P a g e o r g e. That's right. Papa George wasn't a nerd. He was. He was. He was, he was, total, an he was a total nerd. He was a scam artist. He was. He was. A, a, he was, he was the coolest of the nerds. Yeah, he was a freak. He was an opportunist. He was a freak. For sure. But what did you think about the birthing scene? What was that about? When they they laid down on the ground, created. Never like done a, that? 
Not this week. Okay. Uh, what are you doing later? <laughs> I, I haven't done it outside of a hot tent. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell it means. They it's basically, okay, man. It's okay. They all kind of made like a little arc with their arms. They created like a human uterus, and they, they kind of pushed them out like they were giving birth to them. So obviously and the director, too. writer, is trying to say something with that. What is that? What is that? That was strange. <laughs> Burp. We don't well, know. Do we? I, I, they made know. a comment late, uh, like the next day that every single day they go through a birthing ritual, so they probably do okay. this every day. Okay, so why was it him? But why? Yeah, and well, obviously he was new there. No, and obviously it didn't change his character at all because you had the end scene with him still trying to scam the guy. So oh, it didn't, yeah, right. didn't change him at all. There we, was no <laughs> rebirth of Papa George. He was always Papa George. He's the most. <laughs> I thought he was a bit of a villain in this thing. After he, after he was rebirthed, they says, "What is your name?" And he said, "Michael Papa George." Michael <laughs> Papa George. That's right. <laughs> Did you remember? Listen, we're gonna get in the ending here. We're gonna wrap this thing up. We have to. Do you remember Papa George? He ran into the quote unquote android at the end. He takes her to the room. The prostitute. We never know what happens because there, there were so the many heck? cats in the room. He sneezed. Right. But that what? whole thing was weird to me. I, I never right. understood. So, that. and that's what I'm saying. Define cat because there were all there were two dozen cats in well, the room. Well, first there was one. Yeah. No. Yeah. In, in the elevator. And there were ten in the elevator. But he opens the door the with the robot hooker, and now he's looking at cats, which we see on the ultrasound. Yeah. And I'm saying all this stuff ties together. I'm just not smart enough Listen, to get it. Maybe just, that's what it was on his mind. We're gonna move on because you know we'll just go round and round in circles. Yeah. We'll be caught in a Papa George. We'll loop. be <laughs> caught in a loop. In a loop. In a loop. In a loop. Uh, you guys are all good at noticing little details. Did mm-hmm. you notice that all the clocks in the walls are disappearing during this film? I clocks. Time is real. If you man. watch this I film I again, literally said that. Watch yeah. the clocks, especially at the end when he's in the bar talking about the one guy who had this theory that his computer was coming alive. Mm-hmm. The clock on the wall fades away and goes away. There's another scene in there where the clock fades on the wall, goes away. Mm-hmm. What the heck is that? In the last scene, the picture on the wall, you see the dirty outline of a picture. Yes. And I actually scrolled back through the movie and can never find the picture that was on the wall. I thought that that would be the key to the whole yeah. thing, but it wasn't there. There's a lot of weird stuff. And you I'm know watching this... this movie again, just letting you know. <laughs> you have to watch it. And sometimes this guy's legs would grow, and he would turn into like this big android thing. I have no idea about that. I don't know what That's you're in talking the bar about. Watch it. It'll when freak you out. Scotch. It's creepy. The ending scene, man. Um, I'm going to talk about, we obviously can talk about Peter ends up with this android. When she ripped her head off and there were wires and circuits in there, I yeah. flipped out. I'm like, okay, this film, you went places and you said, I'm going there whether you like it or not. I respected it. Did you find that? Like, I almost kind of cheered at that part. Honestly, that was the most interesting part. That's why yeah. I watched it a second time. Yeah. Because at that point, I was like, I, I completely missed something. I totally missed something, which made me define a lot of things, which you can't really define cat very well. <laughs> in, you want to come over sometime? In terms of this movie. Right. But I did define uh, Czar, which is the computer program that they were using, which is Ruler Emperor the yeah. First. Yeah. So that's the first. So obviously... It was cool to me in a lot of that regard. I think that a scene like that can That's either push it you. Made. It can push you, you one way or it can push you the other. I think when you see that, whoa, it either turns you off or it's like, okay, man, you pulled me in. You, oh, for, can, first off, I didn't go, whoa. I went, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I went, oh, chess. <laughs> chess, whatever. <laughs> Guys, we're going to, we're going to have to end that there. We're going to get into uh, our topic. I do want to say, quick. Henderson lost the chess match. He lost it he straight did. up. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah, yeah he, no, he, 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 and he smacked the table to show, to just, End it because he was losing. That's all I want to say. And that's right. humanity giving it to him. That's the 2013 film, Computer Chess. I thought it was cool. I think this is the kind of film you're going to have to be, uh, he's going to be in the mood for it. It will sneak up on you if you're not prepared. A lot of ambitious, ambition in this project, though. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're just definitely ambitious. It's worth, it's worth a, a second and third viewing. All right, man. That's it. Uh, 2013 film from Andrew Bujalski. Good work, in my opinion, but, you know, I'm alone in that. I guess I'm at the high end of the totem pole. You're not Computer alone. Chess. That gave it a seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, seven. Yeah. That's high end. That's high end. Yeah, yeah, and I went to a five. And, and I'm glad that I'm not alone. Thank you, Michael. You like that? Yeah. Thank you. I would really thought that I was going to be defending this for. <laughs> you had your dukes up, didn't you? I really did. When I heard four, 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 I was like, oh man, it's on. <laughs> All right, guys. This, this inspired our top three nerds in film, without referencing Revenge of the Nerds. Max Gumbo Johnson. Leave us can't off, do man. it. Gumby Bear can't do it. Can't do Come it. What do you mean I can't do it? Bear. All right, number three, Milton from Office Space. That's Ooh. my number one. Oh. <laughs> all, and, and all my nerds had to really make their mark on the world, and Milton blew up the building just like he said he would. Milton took it to town, man. Yeah. He got to set that place on fire. He got like his swing he line, his swing line stapler. Yeah, he just yeah. wanted to listen to his radio at a reasonable volume. Right. That's yeah. all. And have his just stapler. Really they stuck him in the basement. Volume. They kept putting him in storage room B. Storage yeah. room B. You said I could have my stapler. Yes. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> he really is a great nerd. My number three <laughs> is Milton from Office Space. Right. Let's uh, just go ahead and get that out of the I way. I really thought I was like... That's just the most Breaking awesome the guy of no, all of no. us. 
Adam, the Bomb Rogers. Give Max, me a nerd. Max is probably going to hate me, but Rick Moranis from Ghostbusters. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's, and it's not Rick Moranis. It's Louis Tully. Get it right? Okay. You know <laughs> what I'm Louis saying? Tully. Yeah. I don't, so who's the nerd here, Rick Moranis or Max? <laughs> <laughs> I'm up there with Louis Tully. <laughs> the patron saint of quality outer wear. There's, and that is um, Matt. There are Same so way. many nerds that I really had a hard time with this one. I'm going to go Data from Goonies. Data from Goonies. All right. All right. He's one of my favorites with the teeth and the spikes right. and, the, and the slippery shoes. <laughs> no time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Didn't even No, that's that. not even Goonies. I know. But it's <laughs> What's my favorite he... line he does. God, that's a nerdy thing to say. <laughs> James Hart Sub Savage. What's your uh, number three nerd without uh, referencing Revenge of the Nerds? Uh, Marty's father, Mr. McFly. Oh. From, uh, oh. Back to the Future. <laughs> that Adam could... said that. That earlier, and I said that's the best one you've come up with. That ever. could easily be a quintessential nerd. That is like a uh, the template Kristen for Global. nerds. Yeah. I'm your density. <laughs> <laughs> Biff, lay your damn hands off of her. <laughs> lay your damn, get your damn hands off of her. <laughs> get it right, nerd. Jeez. Nerd. That's the best. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I already <laughs> said my number three, density. so it's back to Max. Number two, Dennis Nedry from Jurassic Park, the guy that set the whole disaster in motion by stealing the embryos. Yeah. You talking about uh, Newman? Newman. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Knight. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. He was not a nerd. He was the super nerd. What are you talking uh, about? You're a nerd. nerd. Listen, man. You're a nerd. He was smart. He was intelligent. He was devious. But he was not a nerd. He was not a nerd. He was extremely He sat nerd. at his desk eating nothing but candy and drinking he soda all the time. Eater. Then I'm a nerd. <laughs> and then and then when they tried to break into the thing, he put that little cartoon. And, uh, 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 uh. I don't yeah, think he, he was, was a, a nerd. No. Dennis Nedry is my number two. For all right, we'll stick with it. I'm with Max. I is he a nerd? Know. He's a nerd. Watch that nerd? film again. He was just I a think computer. Sam Jackson guy. is more of a nerd than him. Yeah, I don't think this guy was a nerd. <laughs> my number two, and I'm going to give a shout out to a very small. What am I going to say? A small screen screen time nerd. Okay, this guy was only in the film for a second, but he was a nerd. That's the bug guy from Silence of the Lambs. Bug guy. The, what you bug know what guy? I'm talking We're about. We're talking about Terminator. All right, first no. off. The one where she brought the sample to him, and he goes, oh, that's a death head moth, and wants to try to task her that's out. exactly right. You watch Everybody that knows that's a death head moth, and we're talking about the <laughs> best nerds. You Not watch that film again. Obscure nerd. That's a bad answer. He's still bitter about me calling Max's Newman a non-nerd. better. If you look at uh, Silence of the Lambs, that guy was a nerd. Look. He was Nedry. a nerd. He was a great N-E-D-R-Y? nerd. N-E-D-R-Y? Spin, spin it around. N-E-R-D-Y. Nerdy. You are white. Oh, you are white and nerdy, man. Anagrammed nerdy. Did I call him out? Gumby Bears is the smartest person I've ever met. <laughs> Adam the Bomb Rogers. Go. Number two, what's your nerd? I referenced these guys last week, and I'm going Bunsen from the Muppets. <laughs> the Bunsen? That's not bad. What is Bunsen? Bunsen. Beaker. Bunsen Beaker and Beaker. Oh, God. Do you just watch cartoons all day? And you're Muppet. They're Muppets. They're Muppet. That? The Muppets Bunsen. are the best. Oh, can we talk about Yeah, that's a nerd. Okay, it's that's a nerd. A nerd. That's very much a nerd. Matt St. Hoodie, Patriot State of Quality Outdoor, what's your number two? I can't remember dude's name, but the guy that wrote The Lawnmower and Can't Buy Me Love. Patrick Dempsey. Well, that's the actor's name. Can't Buy Me Love. He <laughs> bought love. <laughs> he bought love. He bought it. He bought it. He was a nerd. <laughs> what about you, Savage? That's what's it. That's all I got. I know Max is going to hate me for this because I, I can't remember his name, but Richard Dreyfus and Jaws. No. He's... He was social. He's a nerd. No, wait His a name was actually nerd. Matt, wasn't it? The way Matt Hooper. He, Matt Hooper. The yeah. way he crushed the styrofoam Hooper. cup. Uh, listen, we're so. up to number ones now, aren't we? No, oh, yep. we're up to number ones. Oh, this, this is where it gets interesting. This is where the stakes get really high. That's do they moment. really? I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many for number one. I have so many high stakes. Max Gumbo, uh, hold the Gumby guacamole Bears. Johnson. <laughs> Gumby Bear. What's your number one nerd without referencing Revenge <laughs> of the Nerds? <laughs> Greatest nerd ever. Egon Spengler, Ghostbusters. Absolutely. It's now that's bad. a nerd. Well that played. Is a nerd. He and was kind of social, though. No, he collected spores, moles, and fungus. And he got the girl, right? He did get the girl, but only after she told him he was very handy and the pre- he said print was dead. <laughs> I actually think that's a great choice. That's definitely a number one. I got slime. Type of nerd. Great. Save me some. Yeah, that's a quality <laughs> nerd. Save quality me choice. Some. <laughs> I don't think that anybody can possibly disagree with my number one choice. Oh, so sure. Now. My number one. one, I think, is a powerful example of nerd, and that is Toby from American Splendor. He was a total nerd. If you have not seen this, you can actually go on YouTube and just Google American Splendor American. nerd. 
American. <laughs> That's with an M, people. American Splendor <laughs> nerd. Have you seen this film? I have oh, not. American Splendor is awesome. Yeah, you not. know what I'm talking about then, right? I Toby? don't remember him, but yeah, how could I, you not remember that? <laughs> he said it over and over. He gave me nerd. No, he said he said nerd. All right, that's my number one. I'm a and, nerd, and he actually was excited because he was going to go see this new movie. He's going to drive 200 miles away to see it. That was Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, we're going to go over to James Hard Sub Savage. Your number one. What is it? Ah, the biggest nerd, J.S. Sebastian, Blade Runner. Oh boy, look at that. Yeah. You aren't alone in that, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Yeah, he was a big nerd. I he know. was a big nerd. He, he made his own toys. Nerd. They're my friends. They're my friends. I make them. I make them. <laughs> uh, what's your number one there, Hoodie? I got so many. <laughs> Just give us a nerd. You know what? So I got to go. Nerds. I got I to gotta stick with my roots and go Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Oh, all right. I got to stick with my roots, but I have so many others. You're going to go with Peter Parker, Spider-Man. What's your I have to. It's kind of a weird stretch, but um, I got to go with... <laughs> My favorite. Blah, blah, blah. Kick it up. <laughs> Victor Von Frankenstein. I have no. Oh, Frankenstein. What? Frankenstein's a nerd. He got he the girl. What? He was socially awkward. All right. I guess and... Peter Parker got the girl, too. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought of Frankenstein and being a nerd. Yeah. He a nerd. And he was a nerd. He was a doctor. And he wow. stayed all this time in his thing wow. creating something. You're not I talking like about it. Frankenstein, you know, right? Not Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. Okay, right. The name is Frankenstein. But Frankenstein got Terry Gar. Not bad. Uh, so that's it. There's our number ones, right? Yeah. You're oh, going to do a shout do out. I'm going to no, do my own shout out. Honorable mentions from Matt St. Hoodie. What do you got? McLovin. Yeah. He's, he's got to say one. McLovin. Absolutely. Napoleon Dynamite yeah. is basically... Papa George all grown up, gone back in time. God, yeah. it was, wasn't it? That is literally Napoleon Dynamite. Max, give me some honorable mention. I'm going back to Napoleon Dynamite because not everybody forgets Kip. I like technology. He was awesome. David Lightman from War Games. Yeah. What about Wesley Crusher? Wesley Crusher, he was a super nerd. Speaking of Star Trek, Mr. Spock. What a nerd. Yeah. Yeah. I default on Spock because in his planet, everybody was like that. No, he it, was not an outcast. He was but normal. It didn't, no, it on his planet, outcast, he was a he rock was star. Half, no, no, no. He was an outcast because he was half human, half... Um, he, he was, was a muggle. Uh, Vulcan, which makes him, I'm a nerd. A Do you have any idea how nerdy this conversation is Shut right here? Shut up. <laughs> Sam, yeah, just give me a girl nerd, man. What is it? Name the a girl skinny nerd. girl that does the thing um, that time. Girl nerd, girl nerd. Um, How about the nerd girl from Real Genius? I'm I'm drawing a blank on girl nerds, man. I can uh, picture her, but I don't know her. She's skinny. She's cute. Because girl nerds are kind of hot. Yeah, in a way they are. Yeah. Right. yeah, but they're still nerds. What about uh, what's your face? The Drew Barrymore movie. Where she was a journalist. Firestarter. No, no. never been. Would never, never been kissed. Been kissed. So she went How about Romy and Michelle's high school reunion? They're not nerds. What are you kidding me? <laughs> they were the popular girls in school. How about the girl? How about uh, uh, Joan Cusack Carrie. from Sixteen Candles? Carrie. I Wait love Joan Cusack. She's a nerd. She's always a nerd. Come on, that's she probably why a great I love nerd. her. Hey, I went out to Twitter, man. This thing kind of blew up on me. I put this out on Twitter. Name some nerds that were not in Revenge of the Nerds. You want to hear some of these? Sure. Maybe I You'll do. You'll be surprised some of the answers, and I think you'll be in a line. Did with they get these. stuff that we didn't? St no, some they have plenty that we you already did not didn't get. say. Gordon Don at Gordon Don <laughs> says That's Gordon a, Don. That at is Gordon the most Don. nerdy name I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. I'm sure you're a nerd, Gordon, but it's fine. <laughs> Don says Eugene from Greece. Yeah. Yeah, Whatever. remember the kick me sign guy? I've never seen that. Ducky from Pretty in Pink, Pretty check cool. this out. Azel Abedi at Azel Abedi says, the new Q from Skyfall played by Ben Wishaw. Yep. Yeah, but Q, no. any Q is a nerd. Yeah. What is that? What is a Q? Q, the Q. guy that makes his gadgets. Q. His yeah. Q. The new the Q. Q. Hey, all right, listen, you know this about me. I'm yeah. not a big... He has You're not much of a nerd. Guy. He has nerd. his own film cast. Skyfall you know. is Thank you. awesome. Okay. okay, so that's what he's talking about when he says the Q. He's talking about Q. I thought he was making we, fun of us. We also got uh, Corey Haim, Lucas. Remember him? I do. Yep. We got Gummo. Oh, Frog Brothers. Yeah. Gummo. I thought that was going to be your... Never I couldn't do it. There were so many not said. Hey, check these out, man. Kelly O'Neill at Kelly Uane says, what about Jesse Eisenberg and the Social Network. H.O.M. Movie Podcast says uh, Kevin Smith is Warlock and Die oh, Hard Screw Four. Kevin Smith. We're not Every bit of him. <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall and Weird Science. Jeff Goldblum and Independence Day. James Spader yeah. and Stargate. Egon and Ghostbusters. Mick, Rick Moranis and Honey and Shrunk the Kids. Sebastian and Blade Runner. That's right. And Bruce Banner. Yeah, he's a nerd. Ooh, yeah. David Bond. Pretty much any, yeah. Marvel or any superhero. You're going to like Ten nerd. Technically, Bruce Wayne is a, a uh, nerd. No, no, wait a Richard second. Richard Reed. Yeah. Joe Williams at Joe Gurley Joe says Sherman in American Pie, Rupert Grit in Thunder Pants. That's right. Thunder Pants. You ever heard of Thunder Pants? Nope. When I did they make a movie about I me? Have. <laughs> oh. Anthony Michael Hall in The Breakfast Club, uh, John Hughes, uh, his nerds are the best, she says. You know who stepped up? 
Nerd Church Podcast, Sebastian and Never Ending Story, entire oh, cast of Dead Sebastian. Poet Society, <laughs> Rick Moranis and Ghostbusters, Will Wheaton and Stand By Me, but here's something I'll, I'll throw at you. Will Wheaton. The Stinking Paw says, how about Clark Kent, which was quickly shot down by HOM Movie Podcast because he was only pretending to be a nerd. That's oh, right. I, I agree with What's-His-Face has uh, said that. Huh? He says, that's not a nerd. He was only pretending to be a nerd. But Sebastian is amazing. That is so good. <laughs> he literally stole a book, skipped class, and hid to read a book. <laughs> that's fantastic. All right, guys, so there it is. That he is already our... knew it was never ending. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. That is it, man. So if you want to watch Computer Chess 2013, it is on Netflix, instant streaming. Uh, but give it a shot. There it is. Maybe you'll agree or maybe you'll disagree. Uh, either way, let us know. QFilmCast.net. Stop on by. Uh, next week, we're going to queue up another film, and that brings us to Matt St. Hoodie. What is next week's show? You don't even know, do you? You have to think about it, don't you? It's up between three. I'm going to game time it. Um, I think we need a foreign film. So I'm going to go uh, Casa de Mi Padre. <laughs> Casa de Mi Padre. Right. A little bit of humor in there. <laughs> well, it's not that funny. you got to read it. you got to read between the lines. There's I've been a, wanting to see there's this. There's a lot there. It is a deep, deep. It, I mean, you think ch- computer chess is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. That means House of My Father for those of the right. you do not hable español. Uh, we're talking about the Will Ferrell film, right? Uh, yeah. Casa de Cadre. Yeah. The foreign Will Did Ferrell I just film. Casa de Mi Padre. <laughs> mi Padre. No, he said Cadre. I said Padre. Padre. I said Casa killed my Padre. <laughs> that's next week, man. That is uh, that's the film being queued up by Matt saying the patron state quality. I feel really good about that. Yeah. I can't we'll wait. <laughs> one week from now, here we'll be. So that's it, man. Um, on to the next one. As always, thank you for listening to the queue. We'll see you next week when we queue up the film. Casa de my padre. Casa killed my padre. <laughs> casa, casa, casa. Yeah, and we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks a lot. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I can't afford a carriage, but you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two.